Hey guys, we have a colorful week full of planetary transits. We have a bunch going on. This is going to be a week that feels very transformative. Not only is it the end of the year and we are going into a new year, we are headed into 2020. We also have some transformative aspects going on. We have two sign changes. Jupiter is going into Pisces. Mercury is going into Aquarius. And so this is really gonna shift the tone on our mindsets, our perspective, our higher mind the way we communicate, speak, and think. And Mercury is going into its shadow period this week on the 29th. Just before New Year's Eve, we will have a Mercury shadow situation going on with Mercury going in Aquarius. It's going to be in Aquarius for a while, but it's also going to dip back into Capricorn for a bit too, because we have an interesting situation that's going on for 2022 in terms of the retrograde cycle. So again, we're going into 2022 with some interesting energies. I mean, even the vibes on the graph are interesting right now. There is a weird intersection going on around the 29th as we're going into the Mercury retrograde shadow phase. The 29th has a mix of mental energy, a mix of ambitious energy, a peaked out amount of good luck energy, and solitude energy mixed in. So the 29th might feel like a weird day. Um, just again, with some of the stuff that's occurring around the 29th, it is gonna feel a bit odd. Um, it's gonna feel as though, you know, you're having moments where you're wanting to pull back from other people, but yet you need to be social because it's a very social time. Also, it's gonna feel like you have a ton of energy. So you may be wanting to pull back from people so that way you can be motivated, that way you can work on whatever it is you need to work on because sometimes we don't need people in our space when we have stuff that we need to work on. And you could find yourself being in your head around that day too with all the mental energy going on and just contemplating what's going to happen um, contemplating where you're headed where you're headed for 2022 there's just a lot to consider and so you could just be feeling not as social because of that and that steady stream of solitude energy is going on throughout the week it tapers off by the time we get to the second but it is still very much there we also have some psychic energy going on around the first right on New Year's Eve with that solitude energy. That sounds like a hangover to me. Just wanting to be to yourself, wanting to relax. And sometimes when some people are hungover, they kind of feel extra sensory more than normal. So that could be one of those hangovers where you feel extra sensitive to energies. So yeah, it's an interesting week for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe and also share because it does help this channel grow. Also, if you'd like to support the hard work of this channel, you can do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. The beginning of the week is pretty interesting in terms of the alignments going on. I mean, this whole entire week is interesting, but we have Jupiter going back into Pisces. Well, going forward into Pisces. Back on May 13th, Jupiter went into Pisces and it stayed there for two and a half months until about the 28th of July. And then it retrograded back into Aquarius. So now we're coming back to Jupiter in Pisces. And while we're in the beginning stages of Jupiter in Pisces, this is going to bring back themes that occurred around May until about July 28th in your life. So think back to what was going on and what kind of Jupiter in Pisces themes were occurring for you during the mid spring to early summertime because some of these themes are gonna come back up for us to review. And Jupiter in Pisces was actually a really nice time for the two and a half months that we had it. We got a nice preview of what we can expect while Jupiter is in one of its signs, because this planet is the ancient ruler of Pisces. So we can expect a higher frequency Jupiter rather than the last few Jupiters that we've gotten that were Saturn ruled, which does bring about restrictions for Jupiter, although Jupiter does do better in Aquarius. Saturn is the ancient ruler of Aquarius, but there's still some things that go on that make it hard for Jupiter to, for Jupiter to be itself. So if high vibe frequencies are your jam, this is going to be a transit that you're more than likely going to enjoy. With Pisces, Jupiter gets to be all expansive and dreamy. So if you enjoy Jupiterian luck and the Jupiterian luck some people were lucky enough to experience while it was in Sagittarius, this is the type of Jupiter where you get to kind of lay back and dream big. Of course, try to take action on those dreams because the thing with this one is dreaming big can pay off and you can get luck from that and it can be something of manifesting things to yourself, but also take action because 
We are dealing with Jupiter energy and we are dealing with Pisces energy. And a lot of the times with this, sometimes those dreams can be so far reaching that they never materialize. So you definitely want to be careful with that one because it is a slippery slope when it comes down to living in a fantasy land when this aspect hits, when this transit, this ingress hits. But the good thing is it's a very powerful energy. So soak it up for those reasons. It is going to bring in gobs of compassion. The great thing about Jupiter being an expander is it will expand a lot of the positive traits of Pisces. And with Pisces, we deal with compassion. We deal with empathy and actually caring about others, caring about other people's feelings. And so some of that's going to come up to the surface with this energy and that's a good thing to come up to the surface where you're seeing that people are just more kind more charitable and one of the things about this jupiter and this transit is it's helping others without expecting anything in return so it may feel weird if something like that occurs in other words someone helping you out without expecting something in return is you know it's sad to say but a lot of us do expect that it's like oh why are you helping me what do you want you know it's, it's that sort of thing so it may feel awkward when you actually get help from somebody who doesn't want anything back in return that saying pay it forward may go a long way during jupiter and pisces so that's always nice also there's a bit of humility there's humble energy that pops up with this here so you know that's always nice as well because this is the less braggadocious expression of jupiter in one of its home signs and when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, it does get amplified. Um, it gets a bit boastful in some ways on the lower vibration, of course, because there's always a lower vibration and that generally is the lower vibration of it. But with this, this is not one of those types of things. This is one of those things where you get more humble energy. So you may be dealing with more humble people than normal when this comes up here, which again is also nice. This is also going to be a good time for healing too. And healing is always a big thing. Healing is one of those things where I feel like you can never heal enough at, at this point. Um, there's always room for improvement, no matter or what it is in your life and this is going to be one of those times where you know that ends up taking off it may feel like it's becoming more mainstream to get into the healing practices in terms of reiki in terms of eft and all those other healing modalities that are out there and it definitely will amplify the new age stuff that's going on too here and a lot of that has to do with tarot a lot of that has to deal with es esoteric topics and astrology and anything that's under that umbrella of new age is going to get a boost from this which is always nice and I mean I'm assuming if you guys are listening to this you guys like new agey stuff so that's good for that stuff so it's pretty awesome that some of that stuff will get a nice push with Jupiter being in Pisces and the psyche vibes will be amplified so a lot of people may be feeling moments of inspiration a lot of people may be feeling moments of intuitive downloads stronger than they have in a long time so I mean a lot of psychic things can happen a lot of extrasensory things just telepathy in some ways here it, it's interesting because it does bring in this vibes from a higher source or knowledge from a higher place so some of that could be going on in your consciousness and even tapping into parts of your unconscious this is going to be the time where that kind of stuff is happening more often in this energy and so that should be interesting and of course there's always a lower vibration and with this energy you just want to be aware of going overboard and being unrealistic not having healthy boundaries because unfortunately with this energy there it is very boundless it is boundless as hell so there are no boundaries so you just want to be careful that you're not being too trusting and letting anyone in or letting people overstep you and things like that there can be an overly sacrificial tone to this as well so you want to be aware of that where you're being so compassionate that you are completely giving the shirt off your back and there's nothing wrong with being nice there's nothing wrong with being charitable but you want to make sure you're not doing it to the point where you are a doormat sometimes you need your shirt too so you just want you want to make sure you're not over sacrificing there is the escapism that happens with this there is self-sabotage that happens with this a lot of hypochondria that can get blown out of proportion with this one too so something you want to be aware of if you feel like you have something always go to your doctor. Googling your symptoms can make you feel really 
out of sorts and it starts making you think that you have things that you don't have. So you want to be careful with that. Even if you're not Googling stuff, I mean, you could be studying something like psychology and start believing that you have some of the stuff that's in the books, in the DSM. So that's something to be aware of too. I used to have that problem when I was studying psychology and I would think that I had a lot of things and I didn't have them. And it just happens to a lot of people who study psych or go to med school. Just any topic where you're dealing with the mind, the body, a whole bunch of other things. Sometimes those things can get blown out of proportion and you think that you might have some that you don't. So some of them be aware of with this. Jupiter is going to whip through Pisces until about May 11th. It's going to go pretty fast through Pisces. May 11th of 2022. Then it'll stay in Aries for a bunch of months. Pretty much throughout mid-spring, summer, and some of the fall time, it will retrograde back into Pisces on October 28th of 2022 at 28 degrees of Pisces. So we get a quick dose of Jupiter in its home sign, and it is going to be lovely energy. We're in Pisces. Also, it will be pretty decent in Aries as well here. So we get some good Jupiter energy for a change. So it'll be nice to get a lighter side of Jupiter. That same day, Mars is going to be in a semi-square with Pluto. So some of the energy will be a little bit rough. And this is where I was saying in the beginning of the week, we do have some triggery things that are going on. With this energy, you just want to be aware of being too edgy. This could be a very domineering energy too. So this could be an energy where people are overstepping their boundaries and trying to dominate others. This could also be an energy where you're becoming annoyed when people are telling you what to do. So you definitely want to be mindful of your temper when it comes down to things because this one could be a bit hardcore. It is confrontational. It is a power hungry sort of energy. So there can be situations that do get blown out of proportion because of this. So be mindful of your temper and you know try to distance yourself if you have the luxury to from people who are temperamental and angry. On the 29th, Mercury is going into its pre-shadow retrograde at 26 degrees of Capricorn. And there's two parts to this retrograde. It is happening in Capricorn, but it's also happening in Aquarius. And this is also occurring while Venus is still in retrograde. So this is going to be an interesting energy. Of course, I'm going to talk more about it as we approach this retrograde. But start paying attention to the Capricorn themes in your life. Start paying attention to the Aquarius themes in your life because they are going to be popping back up over this next over the next month or so. These shadow periods are a good time to reflect and write things down that could possibly occur. So that way, when you do go through the retrograde, I'm not saying it'll be super easy, but it will allow you to see some of the themes that may pop up in your life during that time. Mercury will go retrograde in Aquarius on January 14th, and then it'll go direct on February 3rd of 2022. And then finally, leave its shadow phase, this post-shadow retrograde phase on February 23rd of 2022. So we have an interesting month or two ahead with retrogrades, with the Mercury retrograde and the Venus retrograde occurring, and then Uranus going direct during this time. It is going to be interesting. Obviously, I will definitely talk about this once we get to that point. So the 29th in itself is going to feel edgy with some of the other stuff we have going on. We have Mars making a quincunx to Uranus, and we also have the Sun making a square to Chiron. So it is an edgy day on top of Mercury going shadow. You definitely want to check yourself during this day when it comes to the Mars Uranus situation because it has this thing where you have a low tolerance for slowness, a low tolerance for people telling you what to do, you know, and Mars is still in that semi square to Pluto. So this is making the irritation levels higher than normal. So you just want to make sure that you're not rushing into things. You want to make sure you're not being pushy when it comes to other people. You want to make sure you're not, you want to make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing as well, because this also has a tendency to cause people to be accident prone. So it's just things that you want to watch out for and just explosive tempers because Uranus can bring up, Uranus with Mars, especially in this quincunx, can bring up some sudden anger, sudden fits of rage and things like that connected with Pluto and Mars. It's not an easy energy for sure. So do the best you can to curb your temper if that's possible. And on top of that, there's definitely going to be some high emotions on that day too. And this is some of the energy too with wanting to stay to yourself, wanting peace, wanting solitude throughout this week because there are some edgier alignments that are occurring. And with the Mars stuff and with the Sun Square Chiron, you really are going to want some space to yourself. With this Chiron situation, it can have you feeling, it's a confidence zapper. So it can definitely make you feel a certain sort of way about yourself. It can make you feel as though, you know, nobody is 
giving you the recognition you deserve. Sometimes this could be a situation where you're in spaces where people don't appreciate who you are. And so this is one of those energies where you have to learn to go where you're celebrated and not stay where you're tolerated because that's just gonna keep leading to feeling like nobody cares. It's gonna keep leading to feeling forgotten. And if people don't appreciate you, they don't deserve to be in your presence. And I know a lack of support is a hard thing to go through, but what makes it far worse is staying in spaces where people don't support you. So do the best you can with this energy hits. It's not an easy fix. It is an, it's not an overnight thing with these hard transits, as I always say. So do the best you can to build yourself up and go where you're celebrated. Game plan to be in the right spaces and to boost your confidence. Luckily, the 30th is a more mellow day compared to what was going on a couple of days ago. Mars is making a sextile with Saturn and Mercury is making a conjunction with Pluto. So this is going to be a day where you're going to feel motivated. This is going to be a day where, you know, you could start feeling like some of the stress from the other day is starting to let up just a little bit. And it gives you the strength you need to power through things that you need to do. With Mars and Saturn coming together, this is the type of Mars-Saturn dynamic you want because this makes you feel like you're finally making progress. You're finally seeing that there's no roadblocks in front of you. You're able to take these opportunities that are in front of you and seize the moment. It allows for you to be very focused on your goals. It allows for you to take care of complex things that you normally don't want to deal with. It allows you to use your technical skills. So this is great for that. This is also great, even though we're in a Venus retrograde, for, commi for committed relationships. This is one of those energies where you reaffirm your commitment. It does bring in high levels of intimacy because when we deal with Mars, we deal with our sex drive. And when it comes to Mars and Saturn, that definitely ramps up the sex drive. And it also gives a bit of staying power when it comes down to those things. So it's lovely for that. If you're not in a committed relationship and you know, with the Venus retrograde self, I kind of don't really advise getting into anything, but this could be a process where you start something and it's, but it starts slow because Venus is in retrograde. But yeah, this is a lovely energy to use. And on top of that, Mercury making that conjunction with Pluto. The thing with this Mercury conjunction Pluto, it is a good energy and it is nice and is lovely to use. It will retrograde back to Pluto. So anything that's occurring around this time again is going to come back up. But the good thing with Mercury conjunct Pluto is it gives you the strength to focus. It gives you the ability to research things and focus on hard topics. Communication wise, it's great for having deep conversations and conversations of substance and socializing with people in a way that's not that small talk stuff or just superficial. It is definitely one of those energies where you connect with people on a deep level. So communication wise, the conversations that you have will be important. They will be will be filled with substance. And also this can reveal some deeper truths about certain circumstances and situations. And again, with this being in shadow, it may come back around the retrograde and reveal another deeper truth that something that you needed to uncover, some mystery that you needed to solve may come back up during the retrograde and this could give you some clarity. So pay attention to what's going on during this Mercury conjunct Pluto time on the 30th because again, these themes will pop back up. On New Year's Eve, the 31st, Mercury is going to make a semi-square with Mars. So this can be hair triggery. Communication wise, even though we have some lovely stuff going on, this can come back in a way where the wrong thing is said and the wrong thing is said over text message. You can feel a little bit triggery than normal. And so something someone's saying may rub you the wrong way in this energy. And I mean, that's not hard to do on New Year's Eve. Everyone's a little drunk. So this could be just a conversation that just gets blown out of proportion and anger creeps so it is something that you want to be aware of. The moon for New Year's Eve will have its mixed bag of jovial energy because of the moon being in Sagittarius and conjunct Mars leading to a lot of adventure that day along with some healing vibes from Chiron. So that could help you guys recover if anything has gone awire from some weird conversations, but there will be a square to Neptune that's going on with that moon too. So that could bring in a little bit of distortion and fog. Just be aware of overdoing it. And this is a night of overdoing it, but just be aware of overdoing it with that moon squaring Neptune on New Year's Eve. The first is definitely a day that's interesting. The sun's gonna be making a trine with Uranus. And Mercury will be going into Aquarius. With the sun making a trine with Uranus, this is signaling the end of Uranus retrograde coming up in the next few weeks. Uranus will go direct on the 19th of January. So this is when you start seeing that you're having breakthroughs and eureka moments from the Uranus retrograde cycle if you have been aspected by this Uranus retrograde. 
There are a lot of moments of clarity that occur from this. And this is one of those alignments too, even if you haven't been affected by the Uranus retrograde, where where you could have sudden breakthroughs within your life and those aha moments. I will say this will be kind of an energetic day, so try to do your best to go a little bit slow because even though this is not the hardest of aspects, this is one of those aspects that still can bring a bit of unpredictability and disruptive vibes. So just something you wanna be aware of and it does bring in that risky behavior too. So. So use this energy to understand some of the complex things that were going on in your life. And that same day, Mercury is going into Aquarius, which is gonna shift the tone in the way we think, the way we communicate, and the way we speak. And in a lot of ways, this is going to be very left brain stuff that's going on here. This is going to help us become more outside the box in the way we think and our perception. This is gonna be great in terms of just being a free thinker and thinking for yourself and individuating within this energy. Just being an individual and speaking your mind no matter what other people think. This is gonna give you the ability to focus your energy on topics that you normally wouldn't focus on. This could get you to a point where you're thinking more scientifically, you're looking for the facts of situations, you're testing your hypothesis before you go out and say something is an actual truth. So it's good for that and it's good for having groundbreaking thoughts and you know this is the type of energy where we can see some breakthroughs and again breakthrough is going to be a huge thing that's going to come up within this energy having breakthroughs especially during the retrograde because Mercury will retrograde in this sign. So we can see some of that we can probably see something coming out in terms of the field of research where you know there's been some deep research that's been going on collective level we could be learning about some new research or we could be learning about some research that has been in development for a while and they're finally having a breakthrough within this research on a social level this could be great for just getting together with friends communicating with friends making new friends being more open to people being more open to all kinds of people and different walks of life because this type of energy does have that sort of vibe to it so this is going to be great for networking and connecting with friends and you know linking people together too because within this energy we do link people together in other words like being a matchmaker maybe not romantically, but just being a people connector of sorts does come up within this in terms of the communication you're having, just trying to connect your friends with the right people and vice versa. And of course, there is a shadow side to this. You do want to be aware of suffering from groupthink. So you want to make sure you're not, you know, going into a hive mind state because the thing with Mercury and Aquarius is, is thinking with the group. It's also about being an individual, but sometimes there can be groupthink, there can be hive mind sort of behavior that happens. So you want to make sure you are using your discretion and you're not going along with something because a specific group goes along with it or it aligns with your beliefs and that sort of thing. Just something you want to be aware of in this energy. Also, there could be a coldness to this energy. There could be a sterileness to this energy as well. It can be one of those things where it's so much about the scientific side of things and also detaching from people that you could find yourself feeling a little bit more alienated than normal or you can, you know, alienate people without even, you know, really thinking because you're kind of in this state of just disassociation and detachment within it. So yeah, this is definitely something you want to be aware of when it comes down to this energy. Other than that, use this energy to think outside the box within your life. Anyway, here's to 2022. I hope that it is a fabulous year for all of you guys and that you gain all the things that you're striving for. Here's to having the best 2022 ever. Later, guys.